Good morning, my lovely little ghosts, and welcome to the Dark Orchard. I'm Laura, and this is a cooking video. As I said in my intro, this is a cooking video. More specifically, today I'm going to show you how to make Chucky's favorite food, Swedish meatballs. But I'm not going to do it the traditional way, I'm going to do it the Laura way, because I take a few shortcuts and I don't add some things that are supposed to be added that are supposed to be like pivotal things. Basically, I'm going to show you how to make Laura style Swedish meatballs that kind of just taste like Salisbury steak. So without further delay, let's cut to that overhead footage of me making the Swedish meatballs. So we start off with ground beef and then add one fourth cup of breadcrumbs. Then in this mixture, I have salt, pepper, and parsley. Take a spoon and get all that in there because that's the good stuff. And then last, add the egg. Once all of those are in, you're going to mix until all of it is combined. Okay, so once it's been mixed around enough, you got to get a little messy. Put that nice and combined. I'm going to move the greased tray over and start meatballing. Okay, now you wash your hands. So that bowl gets washed, and this is what you should have. This is what you should have when you're done rolling them into the meatballs. So now we are going to bake these on 350 for about 30 minutes. Just gauge them 20 to 30 minutes, then we're going to roll them over and add the sauce. So while these are baking, I'll show you how to make the sauce. Okay, so I already pre-prepped my butter and olive oil. For this, you need five tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil. I'm gonna start the heat and turn it to about five for now, um, halfway, medium. Medium, I think, is what most things say. So next, you add beef broth. This calls for two cups of beef broth. So if one can is almost two cups, I'm not going to worry about the extra. I'm just going to do a can of beef broth. And then I need one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. It doesn't matter if it's a little over because it's always good to add more. Next I add the mushrooms. These are pre-cooked portobello mushrooms because I didn't want to have to go to the extra step of sauteing the mushrooms before. But this is why I didn't worry about the extra beef broth because these mushrooms come in beef broth so it pretty much evens out to the right measurements. On top of that I'm going to add some onion. Um, I'm not using fresh onion, I'm using powdered onion. But these are just dehydrated onions that will hydrate in the mixture. So I'm going to agitate all this around for a minute and mix it in until that onion is sunken down into the sauce. So now that I've added that, I'm going to add the rest of this flour. This is three tablespoons of flour and the onions were... and we added half a cup of onion. And then I have a bit of a cheat code. I add gravy to my mixture just to thicken it up a little bit more because for some reason the flour doesn't thicken up the way I want it to. So I always add some light gravy. So I always add some gravy just to give it that hearty taste. So the 
gravy that I use is a classic chicken gravy from Heinz. And yes, I know, mixing chicken gravy and beef is like taboo, but believe me, it tastes delicious. And then the final ingredient is a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and one cup of heavy cream. Once again, that mushroom sauce with the beef broth had salt and pepper in it, so I don't usually add salt and pepper here, especially since we added salt and pepper to the mushrooms. So I just stir this around and let the butter melt in it, and then I'll let it simmer for a little bit before I add it to the baking meatballs. So once the butter is melted, I'll put a lid on this and let it simmer. Ooh, too much splash splash. These down in the sauce. And then I'm going to put them back in the oven for another 25 minutes. I took a picture of my plate once I made them, which the picture is here. But I did not film myself eating them because I, I ate them immediately. Trust me, they're good. If you like southern style Salisbury steak, you'll like these meatballs. Like I said, they're not quite like the traditional Swedish meatball, but they're close enough. They're my own twist on the classic. And honestly, I think they're so good. Anytime that I do a Chucky marathon, I make some Swedish meatballs and I make some chocolate chip cookies. If you want to see my chocolate chip cookie recipe, I can make a video on that too. So next week is going to be my Chucky season one video and then possibly my chocolate chip cookie recipe or another video. Haven't decided yet, but definitely next week you'll see that Chucky review. And yes, I will be posting my water parks review before the Halloween season begins, before Vlogoween begins. Again, my Vlogoween theme is going to be gothic films with an emphasis on Tim Burton. And because I'm going to be gone during Vlogoween, I am going to have to pre-film some videos so you'll see some pre-filmed ones while I'm away in Florida. But I will return with lovely vlogs. I'm going to be separating the water parks review from the Chicago travel review. I feel like they deserve their own videos, so those will come separately. The Chicago travel video may come after Vlogoween. Not quite sure yet, but I just wanted to give those few little updates. So if you do use this recipe, please let me know. Tag me on social media. I would love to know what you think. And for the comments down below, tell me what your favorite Chucky movie is. If you don't talk to me about that, tell me what horror themed food you would like for me to try next. And if you don't talk to me about that, just talk to me about something because I love for you to talk to me down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you come around again soon. Say bye. Bye.